Everybody's talking about ChatGPT, the generative artificial intelligence application that does everything from drafting resumes to providing relationship advice. Generative AI is a huge leap in AI's capabilities and puts the technology into the hands of everyone. It's also poised to transform businesses with its virtually unlimited applications. But as the technology takes the world by storm, organizations must determine how they will use and govern generative AI. Joining me today are Srikar Krishna, Principal U.S. National Leader for Artificial Intelligence at KPMG, and Charles King, Managing Director in KPMG's Internal Audit and Enterprise Risk Practice. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Generative AI is taking the world by storm. Can you first explain what it is? What sort of business applications is it creating? You know, when we think about AI, and it's not a new thing, everybody has heard the word artificial intelligence for a while now. Um, what is a surprise, what, what will be interesting for viewers to hear is that the generative AI is a new wave of AI where we are really talking about uh, content being produced brand new from AI whereas previously we had been using it for making interpretations out of the data. Uh, we were using it most as a, mostly as a decision support, but now we are actually starting to use uh, uh, generative AI to create new content that is brand new, that has not been seen by humans before. And the, and the methodologies that we had used in the past have evolved to give us this new technology or this new methodology. It's not something that is out of the blue, but it is uh, evolution of what we had seen before as AI. So how can internal auditors use generative AI in their work? I think there are a number of ways that internal audit can use generative AI. I think some of the first uses that, that internal auditors have, um, have used are things like doing just doing research, understanding processes, understanding industries, Generative AI is, is generalized, right? So it's very good at understanding a little bit about a lot of things. Um, obviously, you know, we'll talk about risks a bit more, I'm sure, but you can't fully rely on factual output from generative AI. But you can get a good, you know, B, B minus answer to a lot of questions. And, and for scoping an audit or the beginning of kind of researching around risk assessments and things like that, sometimes that just helps you have a better discussion with your team and with your stakeholders about the things that you're auditing. But additionally, you know, generative AI has been surprisingly good at doing a lot of typical audit tasks, like coming up with a first draft of a scope memo or coming up with a first draft of audit test plans. I recently asked one of the generative AI solutions that we've deployed internally here at KPMG to show me what are the payroll process risks that I should be concerned about. And it had a great answer, and it only took about five seconds to come up with that answer. And even asking things like, what, in, what controls would I expect to be associated with those risks? And how would I go about testing those controls? Again, the answer required some tweaking to get it to a point where it was usable by our team, but the initial output was actually really, really good. What risks are involved with generative AI, and how can organizations address them? Today, the uh, generative AI models that are out there, they were trained a lot on open source data. And, and this brings a, an interesting uh, uh, risk to the end user, which is well, the data that is generated from there, uh, who has the ownership? Uh, because the open source data that was sourced in order to build the models, the, the use of data may not have been rightfully licensed. And that th then brings up a question, you know, how do we use the outputs that are generated by these models? And who has the ownership to the outputs that are generated by these models? And clearly, this is something that uh, the industry is starting to take a look at. And, and we may see uh, certain models that will come out with uh, fully licensed data. And, uh, you know, that may provide some of the answers. Uh, but the risks start to kind of become exponentially higher from there on. Uh, think about uh, hallucination, uh, which is actually a very fancy term for <laughs> these generative AI models producing terminologies that uh, no longer are relevant to the question or the conversation that we are having. And the main reason that happens is because generative AI models are not like uh, you know, the human uh, way of generating knowledge where we start with a hypothesis and then we narrow down from hypothesis and then we have argumentative statements and then we elaborate on statements with uh, examples and research. 
the way uh, generative AI models work is they are a, a statistical machine that is looking at the bunch of words that have been offered to them and it predicts what should the next word be and what the next word to that be so in, in a lot of in a in a sense it is producing statistically relevant and important words as it produces the answer which means that it sometimes can uh, skip over the truth and produce words that fit into the paradigm of a statistical learning, but does not really represent the truth of the matter that is behind it. And what is very interesting is the conviction with which the outputs are generated now makes it hard to even test the truth of the matter, especially in areas where there is no black or white answer. So for organizations and auditors, what's the best way to get started in using generative AI? One of the first things that, that I tell anyone who wants to talk about generative AI is you need to communicate, establish and communicate a policy to your organization about what the rules of the road are with respect to generative AI. Right? For all of the reasons that we've talked about before, um, the IP issues, I think, are a big one. The hallucinations are another reason. I don't think the right answer is generative AI is off limits, don't use it. But education about the risks and opportunities of generative AI can go a long way to make sure that people are using it responsibly and using it in a way that's going to be helpful to your overall corporate mission. Charles and Srikar, thank you very much for sharing your insights and your time today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's our pleasure. <laughs>